So now before I get into the details of each synthesizer, let's create a track where there is a triggered step at step zero, and every other step is a control-only step. The reason I'm doing this is because it allows for any change made to a synthesizer to be heard instantaneously. Remember that a control-only step loads all synthesis parameters but doesn't affect the envelope. If we set every step except for the triggering step to a control-only step, and hold triangle while modifying parameters, we'll be able to hear all synthesizer changes immediately. So what I'm going to do is go to a new uh, loop, so I'll go to loop 99, and there's nothing here. So first of all, I'm going to trigger a note at step 0 by pushing uh, X. I'm going to go to loop 1, press X and press up on the analog pad. So now that loop 1 is a, or step 1 is a control only step, because it's an orange. Um, the reason why you're not hearing anything right now is because the frequency for uh, at step zero is extremely low. If I bring this up, you'll be able to hear a note playing there. Now I'm going to go to uh, uh, fill track. Uh, so I press start and go down to track, select track, go to fill track, the fill step of one. So now uh, Every step is a uh, is a control only step. So uh, the the last thing you need to do is you need to change the output envelope. As you can hear right now, the output envelope for this track is very very short. So what I'm going to do is uh, push start, push up to go to system, select system, select edit synth, select BAM zero, select gen, or excuse me, select n. And then I'm going to change the X mult parameter for every step by holding triangle and pushing up on the analog pad. Oh, <laughs> well, I, the real reason why we weren't hearing sound there, this is my mistake, is that I had. Uh, set the frequency at step 0 to 82, but then I had already triggered a step on step 1 where the frequency was uh, 0 to hertz, so extremely low. It basically turned off the synthesizer. So the first thing I need to do actually is set the frequency for every step to be the same value. And now you can hear the, the full note playing and the envelope uh, is... Uh, is long enough that you can hear the whole note for the entire loop. Now, uh, I'll explain the envelope parameters later, so don't worry about trying to figure out exactly what this means right now. But uh, also, I'm going to exit this, and I'm going to go to uh, to loop one by pressing right, and pressing uh, the uh, the right trigger, because I've already set this up for all the loops. So as you can see, I have all eight. Uh, generators uh, with a trigger step on step zero and every other step is a control step. Okay, so uh, so now we have this track that's available that we can use for media control. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, is uh, actually get into explaining how this works. So, I'm going to select Synth. Oh, actually, one more thing I want to show you is that if you want to get quick, ac quick access to the uh, synthesizer menus, what you do is you press triangle plus left trigger and right trigger. So if I press triangle, left trigger, and right trigger, uh, that pops up a menu which gives you access to either the generator envelope for the current selected track, which was BAM0. So I'm going to select generator, and now we have all the parameters for BAM0. So, uh, BAM is my version of a two oscillator uh, virtual analog synthesizer. It has two oscillators which can be mixed and remodulated together. BAM also has some additional controls which are common to many other generators in PSPC. Uh, first of all, let's look at the Freak 1 parameter. So, I'm going to highlight Freak 1. This is the frequency of the first oscillator. Uh, and in this case, we have, uh, freak, we have this configured for uh, absolute frequencies. And uh, this means you can set it to any frequency that you want. Um, so if I hold down triangle and press the uh, analog pad up or down, 
you can hear the frequency is changing, and it's changing instantaneously because we have all these control steps set up. So, um, so if I uh, and if I use the uh, digital pad to control this, so if I hold triangle and digital pad um, in the in the left trigger, I can change the frequency by very small amounts. Pretty much inaudible, um, but it can help if you want to get uh, precise tuning. So you might be wondering why the BAM generator sounds like a single oscillator right now, even though there are two oscillators in this generator. Uh, this is because they're both perfectly in tune with each other. The frequency of the second oscillator is set by the offset parameter. So um, now we have offset highlighted, and if we, we can change this parameter a little bit by holding triangle and pushing the analog stick down. Now you're getting the sort of a classic detuned oscillator sound where we have uh, two oscillators are very close in frequency, but they're not at the exact same frequency. So if offset is less than one, then the second oscillator is uh, of a slightly lower frequency than the first oscillator. So it's uh, just below 170.738 hertz. And if I move it up a little bit, now the second oscillator is just above. Um, so you can also set it up so that way it plays an octave below by changing the offsets, that way it goes down to, say, uh, 0.5. So now the, uh, the second oscillator is uh, one octave below because uh, the frequency distance between octaves is, uh, is twice, or is one half the value of the, of the main frequency. So, in this case, if freq1 is 170.738, uh, the offset frequency has to be around 85. And then if I go up to freq1 and change this value, you can hear that offset 2 uh, changes, uh, the frequency of the second oscillator changes with the frequency of the first oscillator. So they stay uh, perfectly in tune. Uh, also, if I change offset to, say, 2, Now the second oscillator is one octave above the first oscillator. Uh, there's also a chart in the, uh, in the quick reference sheet and also the user's guide that gives uh, offset values for uh, maintaining specific semitone distances between the first and second oscillator. So uh, one thing that's, that's important in uh, controlling the uh, generators is that sometimes you want to reset back to the default value. Um, so for instance, let's say we want to set the offset back to 1.0. It'd be very hard to get the exact tuning by using the analog pad. So what you can do is you can push a uh, square. And what that does is it loads the default value back into the offset value for, uh, for the current step. And then you can use the digital pad in order to control the offset very carefully. So if you hold uh, triangle and the left trigger and push up on the digital pad, and you push down the digital pad, now you can see that uh, we've latched all the values together to the same value. And uh, if I jump from step to step, the offset is one in each of these.